We're about to enter state election season in Australia. There's state elections coming up in Queensland, South Australia and Tasmania. Uh, yeah, we'll focus uh, both on Queensland and South Australia because in those states uh, voters are leaving the major parties. In South Australia they're turning to uh, Nick Xenophon's party which is called SA Best there and in Queensland it's of course it's One Nation. Uh, both of these parties are likely to hold the, the balance of power post-election in these uh, res respective states. Uh, which is it's certainly going to you know if if that is the case it's 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 certainly going to lead to um, some some interesting times for, for for those states and also you know whether obviously you know one nation and xenophon they're on the rise at the moment but we've already seen that they're, they're having trouble with as they as they're termed you know rogue candidates I mean are these you know uh, populist parties, you know, fit for you know state state government and you know being in a in a coalition potentially with the major parties. Uh, well, I think that democracy, in a sense, has become a bit boring in Australia, uh, purely because the Labor Party is owned is owned, you know, by you know essentially you know activist groups such as GetUp, big unions such as CFMEU, which which have a, a huge war chest, I think 2.5 billion, you know, they're, they're just huge amounts of money um, behind them. And it's definitely seeing, you know, alternatives. Now, you know, I think that Xenophon is certainly aligns with Labor on many policy, but he's a pragmatist, you know, he's, he's not caught up as much in uh, partisanship as maybe people like, more so deal making, getting things done. and. I might not agree with his politics or his outlook, but I certainly do think that having uh, the Xenophons, the Hansons, the Roberts uh, in politics uh, gives a breath of fresh air to it. And it also potentially might get people who aren't, you know, don't feel uh, that they were a part of the democratic system to become a part of the democratic system because you know, it is interesting. Uh, it's not just the same old money behind the same old people with the same old ideas. So I think that this is definitely good for our democracy, you know, and our federation. Uh, and of course, Nick Xenophon himself has entered the South Australian election contesting the lower house state seat of uh, Hartley. Um, but as I mentioned, they're having trouble with uh, ca candidates. I mean, they had to disendorse one candidate because he posted some uh, inappropriate selfies with celebrity wax figures, which included him uh, appearing to punch a, a wax figure uh, of Rih Rihanna. And these are how these minor parties, uh, you know, who have surged... Uh, in various elections fallen apart is because you know they they do have a lot of you know inexperienced uh, you know people who who do do get elected and often you know the uh, you know the power can you know can go to their head and then the 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 party falls apart. I mean you just had to look you know recent history uh, what happened with Clive Palmer's party. I mean he got three senators elected. He got a uh, he he got elected to the lower house and you saw you know um, Jackie Lambie quit and then you saw you know Glenn Lazarus quit and it was over you know before. Um, uh, you know, uh, before the the next election, I, I definitely think I you know obviously do support you know minor parties having uh, a much much greater say, but uh, I, I certainly don't think uh, it, it's good if the if these parties have you know bad policy and you know are just, uh, have a destructive influence in our democracy. For example, I still do not forgive uh, you know Clive Palmer for his. Three, three years in the, in the federal parliament, I don't care how good he is at memeing. I mean, he blocked the the only good chance we had at budget repair, and you know I will always resent him for that because we're still dealing with you know f more, uh, more debt and deficit uh, every year. So yes, I, I do like to see a change from from the major parties, but I certainly think that you know any new player on the scene deserves scrutiny. It's it's definitely difficult because, for one, you look at One Nation's policy 
uh, you know, and it contradicts itself in certain areas. For instance, you know, Malcolm Roberts might say, you know, if, you know, economically we're all about choice, you know, in regards to energy, fracking and nuclear, you know, bring it on. And then, and then, then on the party website, they, they say that they're for a people's bank, you know, which, which that's, that's shit that happened in, in, uh, you know, communist Russia, you know, and now China. They had a people's bank. So, you know, in for one sense, they are in for complete, you know, economic freedom. Uh, but in one sense, they're for a people's bank. They're for tariffs. So often with these minor parties, they can have, you know, conflicting uh, policy and that can be a bit problematic because they don't have a coherent um message, a coherent vision and a coherent worldview that they can follow. Uh, and if you don't have a worldview and a vision to follow, then it, it certainly does become a bit difficult to, to govern. Uh, One Nation, its policies, yeah, you're right, don't, don't appear to be updated from you know, 20 years ago when they first formed, but definitely from you know what I see from you know, Pauline Hanson and Malcolm Roberts, uh, I personally hope that he survives this uh, high court case, but they definitely um, seem a lot more you know, economically literate than, they, than their policies do. I mean, for example, Pauline Hanson, she supported the um, you know, reductions in you know, Sunday penalty rates because you know, she said, I used to be a fish and chip shop owner, I know how much they, they, they hurt, hurt business. So I think, you know, uh, obviously she's not running for you know the the, Queen, uh, the Queensland Parliament, but still has uh, a lot of influence. Certainly, um, you know, one, uh, one Nation is the you know uh, minor party force uh, that I'm you know, less concerned about. Yeah, well, uh, I'd be worried. Certainly, any seat that the Greens get their hands on is a real problem. Uh, Xenophon, yeah, I, I think that Xenophon's good um, for the left. I think he's a good, honest, true lefty. You know, I don't think that he's beholden as much to union power, union sway. And I think that if he's a, a good, true kind of uh, social democrat left winger uh, who's, who's valued base, you know, he's got values, he's got a world view, uh, that's good. I think it's good having some diversity, and I think to say that anyone who doesn't think like you is inherently, you know, dumb or silly is bad as well. You know, I think that this fusion of liberalism and conservatism, you know, does as well in this nation. Um, but certainly, another thing w would be to worry about is, you know, Xenophon claims, you know, he is a saviour, you know, a messiah for South Australia, uh, but. Certainly, I don't know how he will fix um, the energy crisis where, where he is a man who supports uh, renewable energy and uh, we, we can see where renewable energy has got South Australia. You know, it's just, you know, an economic, you know, disaster. So, you know, that's another interesting thing as well, Tim. Yeah, it's uh, it's been pointed out by many political commentators that Xenophon cleverly markets himself as uh, a centrist, but the party that he votes with, you know, most of the time is the is the Greens. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's it shows how talented he is as a, a, a politician. But I certainly agree that you know Xenophon is you know is not the answer to. Uh, uh, South Australia's problems, and let's not forget all the yeah, the reason why he's also popular in South Australia is because of all the you know industry assistance he he, he wants to give to keep you know a ma a manufacturing there. I mean, he's a big you know protectionist, saying you know I can bring all the jobs back as well. Um, Tim, you pay taxes, yes? Ah, uh, yes. Do you appreciate having to pay for frigates and for submarines built in South Australia that cost two, three times more than they could be built for in Japan? Do you appreciate that coming out of your pocket? Uh, I'd like I'd like to see my you know ta tax dollars uh, efficiently spent if I am to be taxed. Well, I, I think that, that that is clear and simple to anyone 
uh, you know, with one iota of intelligence, at Xenophon with this protectionism and this, you know, savvy marketing of cent centralism, uh, you know, you know, says he's a pragmatist, a toolmaker, and in many senses he is. But in many senses, he is also buying uh, votes in South Australia, so he can have a cushy, you know, I think he's been in the Senate for nine years, that's $200,000 a year, you know, that that's quite a bit of money, right? And I think that, you know, he is more interested in buying votes, buying the support of South Australians, rather than scrutinising legislation in the Senate to make sure, you know, that tax dollars are spent as good as they can. I think that Xenophon, you know, was solely interested in buying favours and buying votes, you know, and, and self-aggrandisement. Definitely uh, is good that he is leaving uh, the Senate, I think. Uh, and I think that, you know, uh, he will be replaced by a member of his own party when he runs for the state. But obviously, we have to remember that he was caught up in, I think, uh, the section 44, uh, 41, I can't remember now, yeah, of the Constitution. Uh, 44, yeah. Um, he's caught up in that. So instead of fronting the high court, I think he's saying that, hey, I don't have to spend all this money on a on an SC uh, or, or a QC or, or what have you uh, to to contest, you know, the the constitutional validity of my job. Instead, I shall, you know, go and and cop fifty thousand dollar kind of cut to my salary, and uh, I'll work in the state parliament, you know, uh, and do the exact same thing, you know. Uh, you know, buy the votes of the South Australian people at the cost of the South Australian economy. Well, regardless of our opinions, uh, bo both uh, state elections are, g are going to be you know, intriguing to watch. Uh, the Queensland state election could be called at any moment now. We know that South Australia has fixed parliamentary terms, so theirs will be in March uh, 2018, but uh, the Unshackled will certainly be there to, to cover uh, both, uh, both elections uh, in detail, so we'll certainly be discussing this more. And, and just probably one more thing, uh, Tim, is the fact that uh, One Nation and uh, Nick Xenophon's team will probably both be uh, could, could potentially both be sharing a uh, balance of power within uh, the state of Queensland and the state of South Australia. Um, and and will this be able to stick together? You know, will this just be more political turmoil? I certainly do hope that uh, One Nation uh, in, coal in coalition uh, potentially, or you know, just work in conjunction with uh, the Liberal National Party. You know, uh, can undo. Uh, some of this this mess that's been created by Labor in Queensland, but certainly a lot to look forward to. I certainly hope. I, I'm actually ignorant to Parliament, man, but I hope that the Liberals uh, can get in charge. You know, with a majority, not with a not with a balance of power with Xenophon. And I hope, hopefully, they've got some guts. You know, uh, to actually take down this state. You know, renewable energy target. Uh, and to say, you know, let's build some coal power stations, you know, m maybe if it's government that has to do it first, you know, so be it. And, uh, you know, let's, let's frack, let's do gas. And I think that if the Liberals get in charge in South Australia, I can expect a massive boom in the South Australian economy, which will be good for all of us who uh, pay tax. Uh, that, that, that would certainly be uh, f uh, a pleasant uh, outcome, and uh, we, can, we can certainly dare to dream on that front. Uh, but that this has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.